Street Fighter has never been a franchise known for producing the most well-woven of story tapestries, but hey, that makes some sense as Capcom has produced so many characters over the years that trying to weave them all together through a story that's being developed by different people at different times and in bits and pieces that are out of chronological order is going to result in some chaos. Top that all off with the fact that while it's important, story has never been the highest priority when it comes to fighting game development, and you're naturally going to have a lot of fighters wind up with cool enough designs, but weird or meaningless contributions to the main plot. Oh, who the heck are what you? What do we have here? Smiling like a crazy person. Your voice has a unique rhythm you to a it. Of mine? And or, that's or maybe you want to be my new apprentice it's or something. Out that's how um, we be. One new character from Street Fighter V, however, stood out as having the capacity not only to impact the overall Street Fighter lore and timeline in a massive, potentially apocalyptic way, but also finally offer up some answers surrounding the identity and story of Q, the franchise's most mysterious figure to date. That character was the powerful, perplexing, and charismatic G. G was first introduced as the seemingly benevolent president of the world, whose aim was to unify all peoples and nations. With his Abraham Lincoln stovepipe hat, interesting gameplay abilities, and golden tattoos of the continents that magically moved around his body, there was already plenty to interest players as they were getting a fun character brimming with personality. G spoke almost entirely in rants about unity and coming together as one with the Earth. And though these rants sounded good enough on paper, he constantly used intentionally vague terms that reeked of double entendre. And it didn't take audiences long to catch on to the fact that the things G was saying, in true politician fashion, weren't direct lies, but also had meanings very different and much more sinister than they initially seemed. The foreboding ellipses at the end of everything G said about people coming together started sounding more apocalyptic than benevolent, perhaps even smacking of the biblical concept of the Antichrist uniting the nations in the end times. Though G was released after the main Street Fighter V storyline was completely dealt with, Capcom did release a few more DLC characters that featured G in their SF5 story snippets. Gil mentions that G retains a strange power that he thinks he might recognize. When Psychic Fortune Teller Rose finally came out some three years later, we got another huge piece of the puzzle as she and Oro discuss sensing a strange new power that isn't necessarily evil, but is rather more a matter-of-fact force of nature. Rose then encounters G directly and fights him, which gives her more insight into who or what he is, and the future he's bringing into fruition. Rose becomes terrified as she realizes G aims to bring about the end of everything, and that his plan is both already somehow set in motion and unstoppable. She retreats to reflect on what to do next, and eventually realizes that there is a solution, but that only her former self could achieve it. The end of Rose's SF5 story seems to imply that the world is currently doomed, and that she'll need to time travel, quote, back to zero in order to stop the seeds of evil from ever being planted. That line about going back to zero could imply a timeline jump back to the Street Fighter Alpha days, as this is where Rose made her first ever Street Fighter appearance, and in Japan, Street Fighter Alpha is known as Street Fighter Zero. This all added up to an enticing edge-of-your-seat kind of cliffhanger that we figured would be soon answered in Street Fighter VI, but G, nor Rose, nor any of the even potentially relevant characters are in this latest franchise entry. At least not yet. This is where Capcom essentially left us with G. A new boss character who houses some hidden power and threat more formidable than even M. Bison's. We are still holding out hope that Capcom puts this particular thread back on the loom, but in the meantime, we can actually piece together a little more of the puzzle, thanks to a character introduced almost 20 years prior that we know almost nothing about, Q. Q debuted in Street Fighter III Third Strike as a tall fighter dressed in a detective-like trench coat and hat. His entire head was encased in an iron mask, out from which we could hear guttural breathing sounds and the occasional mumbling of short, vague phrases such as, I am abomination. I am abomination. His story simply follows CIA agents investigating him as Q apparently appeared in photographs at multiple murder scenes that occurred roughly at the same time, but in different parts of the world. 
We can't tell whether Q is investigating or the direct culprit behind these murders, but given he doesn't have the ability to teleport, we're suspicious there may be more than one of him. Not only was G's alternate costume a near copy of Q's, he also had a lot of the exact same movements and attacks as Q, as seen here in this visual comparison from Palm Bear. This all adds up to more than enough evidence for us to conclude that these characters are intertwined in some meaningful way. The Street Fighter games are not in chronological order, and SF3 actually takes place after SF5. A quick conclusion might suppose that G simply evolves into Q in some way, but this doesn't actually seem to be the case, as Q is referenced in Street Fighter V's story while C Viper is on a mission looking for him. Instead, the most likely theory at this point is that G is slowly brainwashing people to assimilate them into his grand vision of unity. Those that have gone through this process are dressed in masks and trench coats, having had most of their humanity stripped away. Q would just be one of G's growing number of victims, perhaps the first, and it could be that Rose's vision of the future saw the whole of humanity assimilated in this way. There are a few pieces of evidence that help underscore this idea. First off, a piece of G's concept art shows off a man and a woman both dressed in G's alternate garb, alluding to the concept of widespread mind control and offering a viable explanation for the multiple Q sightings. Second, Q acts and moves widely like a controlled robot, but will also go through brief moments where bits of an imprisoned humanity seem to creep out. He dusts off his coat after a successful parry, for instance, which is something we imagine a mind-controlled robot type would be apathetic about. This is perhaps even more evident in one of his win sequences that sees him loom over his defeated foe, shed a tear, and walk away. In stark contrast, another one of Q's win sequences sees him stomping the head of and mumbling insults to his freshly KO'd opposition, so lots of inner conflict definitely going on there. Going back to that visuals comparison, we see that Q and G's attacks are very similar, but not exactly the same. Many of Q's movements are clunkier and less refined than G's, suggesting that he's an imperfect imitation as opposed to the exact same person. Finally, Street Fighter V and VI director Takayuki Nakayama shared a piece of Q concept art from the Capcom vault depicting a move that he never ended up getting. It comes with some notes saying, can't feel any emotions from it, should be robot-like, and feels like it's being manipulated from behind the scenes. To set up a massive conflict and tease at finally lifting the mystery surrounding the franchise's most enigmatic character only to drop everything seems like an odd choice. We do hope to get answers, but we'll note that sometimes getting the full story from Capcom simply makes everything worse, as we found was the case with the crashing and burning of the once oh-so-promising Nikali. You can check out that video here after you let us know what you think about G, Q, and the seemingly abandoned Street Fighter Apocalypse story thread in the comments below. I've been John Velociraptor Guerrero for Event Hubs. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.